Joining me right now, former White House spokesman for George W. Bush, Pete Seat, and CNN political commentator, S.E. Cup. All right, let's bring it back home here, friends. Um, out at, let's talk about what's happening on the trail, not the poll of polls. And where I want to start is Christian values being discussed on the campaign trail right now. I want to play for you Donald Trump's message in a speech to conservative Christian broadcasters in Nashville. Listen. How any Christian can vote for a Democrat, Christian or person of faith, person of faith, how you can vote for a Democrat is crazy. Also, this week, here is far-right conspiracy theorist Jack Vosovic at CPAC in a panel hosted by Steve Bannon. I just wanted to say, look, welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, oh. to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. That's right, because all glory, all glory is not to government, all glory to God. What he was holding up there as a necklace, is a, is a, a cross necklace is what I'm told, so you can't see it in that clip. Essie, what do you do with this, these messages? I mean, personally, light my hair on fire, but I've been doing that for about six, seven years, because, I mean... In all seriousness, this was the lament of, of folks like me who saw what Trump was going to do to the Republican Party. He was not only going to convince conservatives to jettison the conservatism, but maybe even Christians to jettison the family values, the morality, the Christianity um, that had been foundational. And now they're leading with this false, this sort of false prophet Christianity, um, where they're not really talking about compassion and doing things that are good for women, minorities, all kinds of people. They're just sort of singing to the cheap seats and, and using Christian word salads to sort of, you know, key into the base, but they don't actually have to perform. They don't actually have to be good people. They don't have to have good policies. They don't even have to govern um, or win in, in this case. Um, so it's, it's a total upheaval of what has been conservative orthodoxy and what has mattered to the Republican Party for a long time. And that's a great point, Essie, kind of the, the context of how long you have been watching this happening. Because we've seen, Pete, yeah. Tim Alberta, our friend, he's written an entire book about kind of the change, the evolution of evangelical Christians and their relationship with Donald Trump in seeing that they don't, they don't, some saying they don't want to, they don't care if he's a, a Christian man, if you will, if he's, if he's an upstanding moral citizen, it's that they'll fight for them. He's the warrior that they need. But what do you see here? Well, I've attended the Conservative Political Action Conference more times than I want to admit on national television. So I've seen it not evolve, but devolve from when it was about smart conservatism. It was about smart policy and taking seriously getting this country on track and how we do that through conservative values. You see now from that clip and in other things that we'll all see here over this weekend that it's, it's all about MAGA. It's all about Trump. The entire conference, all three and a half days, are about Donald Trump. I remember standing in a line to meet Mitch McConnell at CPAC. He used to be a star at that event. Now he probably can't even get through the front doors be before being turned away. But I've also seen this on college campuses and elsewhere in conversations with friends over the years where this my way or the highway mentality was starting to take root within the conservative movement. Donald Trump tapped into that and gave these people a large segment, a majority of the Republican base right now, precisely what they wanted. And, and look, it, it almost, I am kind of make the connection here then when you look to South Carolina, um, in the South Carolina primary, Pete, because the primary is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Trump has remained far ahead in the polling there. And your take is something that's really interesting. You said that two things can be true at once. And to paraphrase you, Trump can be unhinged and Haley can still have no path to the, to the nomination. Why is that? What does that say? 
Yeah, this entire campaign is about two things being true at once. Nikki Haley is right. Donald Trump is unhinged. I think even supporters of Donald Trump would agree that he is unhinged at times. But that doesn't mean that Republican primary voters are voting against him and voting for Nikki Haley. The Republican Party wants Donald Trump to be its nominee. It's plain and simple. And Nikki Haley, South Carolina should be the free space on the bingo card for her. She should be able to win her home state without having to campaign as much as she's campaigned. But fealty is transcendent when it comes to Donald Trump, and he's going to run away with this tomorrow. Essie, I've been wanting to get your take on the fallout the political fallout, the impact of this IVF ruling in Alabama. I saw in Politico, South mm -hmm. Carolina, mm -hmm. um, Republican Nancy Mace, she's really, she's stood up, uh, she's had an interesting and a kind of non-traditional stance that she's <laughs> taken on some of these issues, if you will, I'm gonna say in paraphrase. Um, her take on this is she says, IVF, yeah. the IVF ruling in Alabama, quote, is going to be an issue in 24. What do you think the political impact is of that, of that decision? Yeah. Yeah, putting the merits of the case aside, the politics are really, really messy. And what I think the left will do, understandably, is try to lump it into the abortion and, you know, debate the attacks on women from the Republican Party and the Republican Supreme Court. It makes sense because it is a part of reproductive rights as an issue, IVF. However, politically, it doesn't cut the same. You can look at the abortion debate and it really falls down on party lines, left, right, Democrat, Republican. For the IVF community, families who are, are wanting IVF, many are Republicans, pro-life, pro-choice, Democrats, Trump voters, Biden voters. It doesn't fall as easily along party lines. So anyone who's talking about it, whether that's Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or Nikki Haley, is gonna have to get real specific about what this ruling means and what they would do if they were president um, about it because it's going to matter to a lot of different families, not just Republican families or Democratic families, not just Trump voters or Biden voters, lots of different families. And remember, these are people who want children. It's sort of the opposite side of the coin of the abortion debate. These are people who want to have families. And I think you saw Matt Gates um, on with our Abby Phillip the other night saying, listen, we should be behind people who want to have families. So it's going to put Republicans in kind of a tongue twister and a bind. We'll see how well they do with it on the trail. We've seen how well they've done with it so far, that's for sure. But it's really an interesting new addition to this conversation about reproductive rights, women's rights, yeah. families' lives, families. I mean, all of it uh, definitely uh, ripe for asking these any politician, especially presidential candidates, to really get into the weeds on this. It's great to see you guys. Thank you.